I'm going to run a hard 5k on a volcano at 2,300 meters above sea level. And then again at sea level. <laughs> Psycho, moving through straw. Psycho, this is horrible. I'm currently on the island of Tenerife, home to Mount Tady, a whopping volcano with its summit at over 3,715 meters, which makes it the highest point in Spain. And when you measure it from its base below sea level, actually the third highest volcano in the world. And amazingly, there's a road that comes a fair whack up that volcano, sadly not quite to the top, to 2,300 meters. And it plateaus, as you can see behind me, and almost circumnavigates the crater. And naturally, we thought, let's do a 5K up here. So here I am, about to run a hard 5K. But what's worrying is, I'm actually already feeling the effects of altitude. And in case you're wondering what I'm talking about here, essentially the higher you go and to altitude, there is less oxygen, which is a fairly important molecule for say, doing a hard 5K. Okay, so the plan here is to run a 1730 5K. Firstly, at altitude at 2,300 meters above sea level. And to prove I'm at that, look at these crisps. Actually, there's valuable oxygen in there. I might burst them just before and suck all the oxygen out. And then again, at sea level at zero meters. And that's 330 per K, which should be manageable at sea level, but I'm actually starting to worry about how hard it might be up here. And in the name of science, we're gonna record all sorts of metrics. I've got my heart rate monitor on, and I've got this muscle oxygen monitor. So it will basically track my muscle oxygen saturation during the 5K runs. And uh, spoiler alert, I expect it to be quite low at altitude. So sit back and enjoy me suffering. Okay, here we go then. Three, two, one, let's go. Oh, psycho, moving through straw. <laughs> Oh my God, this is horrible. Why are we doing this to us? This is horrific. Yes. Well, that was pretty horrific. I'm not sure what I was thinking playing this video. Uh, some metrics for you then. So, didn't actually get the 1730 I was after. Ever so slightly outside, 1739. Um, and I really was giving my all, um, which, well, really shouldn't be the case. But anyway, um, my average heart rate was 170. Good to show you how hard I was working with a max of 181. My muscle oxygen saturation, well, I thought it was going all right to start off if I saw the around 30, and then it just started declining quickly. So I was average 16.6, and my minimum was 2.1 muscle oxygen saturation. Uh, anyway, time now to head down to sea level, which hopefully is gonna be substantially easier, and hopefully a bit of a confidence boost for myself, because that was pretty poor. Well, a couple of days have passed, I've recovered. I'm back down to sea level now for another 5K. This time, I'm actually doing a Tenerife top training on their athletics track, just because Tenerife is so hilly and lumpy. This is the only flat thing I could find around. Anyway, another 1730. Hopefully this is significantly easier. I mean, I know 1730 isn't easy, but you know what I mean. Collecting all the data again. Let's see how we get on. Three, two, one. Let's go.
bang on pace, 3.30 through the K. Woo! It's definitely hotter down here. A bit different from up there. I'm running too fast. What is oxygen? One K to go. Definitely to get as out of breath or tie up as much as in there, but significantly warmer. All sorts of metrics to stop now. All right, bear with me. Nerd alert. Pause. Okay. Right. Let me get my breath back, have a drink, and we'll analyze all the data. Two 5Ks done and dusted. Pretty pleased that's all over. I've kind of given away some of the metrics and data already, but time to dive a bit deeper into it because it's really interesting to be honest. Now, before we get to all the numbers, first off, how did it feel? So at altitude, honestly, I couldn't have given any more. I was totally maxed out to the point that I actually didn't hit the goal time of 17.30. I was just outside around 17.39. And I say, just I could not have gone in quicker. Whereas at sea level, I was constantly holding myself back to the point that I actually ran way too quick. I went 17.09 and whilst obviously still a hard effort, I could have easily gone so much quicker. Um, so yeah, it just goes to show. So jumping into some of the numbers, uh, I'll start with heart rate because that's, I guess, a bit more relatable and understandable by people. Um, worth pointing out a bit of a caveat here. I have a relatively high heart rate when I exercise. I quite quickly get up into the 160s, 170s, but even the small incremental changes are quite a bit to me once I'm up into that. So uh, at altitude, I had an average heart rate of 170 and a max of 181. Whereas at sea level, I had an average heart rate of 164 and a max of 174. Okay, and then moving on to muscle oxygen saturation. Now this is the first time I've used a device like this properly in exercise. So as I say, I found this really fascinating. I think you will too. Now uh, to explain this, muscle oxygen saturation is essentially the balance between oxygen delivery and oxygen consumption in the muscles. Now during exercise, obviously your muscles are working harder and increasing demand for oxygen. As a result, your heart rate is elevated and breathing increases to supply more oxygen to those working muscles. Now if the muscles are wanting more oxygen than the body can actually deliver it to, to it, then the muscle oxygen saturation percentage drops down. Now. I was obviously running at altitude for the first 5K. So we'd assume there's gonna be less oxygen available. So we're gonna see that drop down considerably. And we did, oh yeah. All right, so my score here was an average of 16.2 and a minimum of 2.1%. Whereas at sea level, I had an average of 27.1 and a minimum of 14.3. However, it should have actually been about 20. The reason it dropped so low was simply because I was having to talk to one of the camera operators as I was coming around on the last lap to explain where I was going to finish. And it was quite incredible actually to see just it suddenly drop during that small period of talking to them and then pop back up. So Taylor Nib talking throughout the bike leg of the Ironman and the World Champs, well, the numbers don't lie. Anyway, absolutely fascinating. Um, I'm not going to be rushing back to do a 5k at altitude on top of the volcano, but I have enjoyed doing it today for you guys. I hope you've enjoyed watching me suffer. Uh, if you have, please do give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe.